Coming up on tonight's episode, we have a host of important news, including a new computer from HP, new rules from the FCC, Microsoft's new band, Roku gets played, and a ton of news. It's a great episode of Don't Panic, and it's coming up next. Stay tuned. This is Don't Panic, episode number 69, recorded November 3rd, 2014. On HP Sprout, Microsoft's band and Roku gets played. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another exciting edition of Don't Panic, the technology podcast on gadgets, the internet, and you. Uh, I'm Sean Jennings, and I am joined by the guy one and guy two of technology. That would, of course, be Dan Miller and Colby Ravidu. I know, I know what you should have said this today. You know what it and was? It, it, I forgot to think of something. But go ahead, come up with something better, please. Well, it's kind of sad, but you should have said the, the click and clack of technology after the car talk, guys. Uh, uh, that is sad. That was a misboat on my part. Well, thank you, yeah. Dan, for saving the show. Welcome, gentlemen, to another edition <laughs> of Don't Panic. Saving it and destroying it all at the same time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How's it going? Good. I'm excited for... Episode number sixty nine. Episode number. I, I was hoping we weren't going to bring that up, but it's going to be a good one. It had to be done. All let's right. Be honest. If anyone was going to do a Colby, it was going to be you. I I'm mean, glad. I mean, we're all <laughs> children here. <laughs> That's right. It, we're not, if anything, fun. So uh, yeah. we welcome all of you out there watching us. Uh, we do the show every Monday night uh, at ten p.m. Eastern on our website, don'tpanic.io. There you can get live and recorded episodes, all of our archives, all sixty nine of those episodes. Uh, in audio, video, and subscribe on iTunes, RSS, uh, Stitcher, YouTube, and on Twitter at Don't Panic Show. I think that's everything. Um, with that, let's jump into the news. Uh, any particular story you guys uh, want to grab first? Mm, or not? Uh, let's do the, the HP one. All right, Dan, you were uh, kind of interested in this. So, uh, HP, Hewlett Packard. <laughs> Uh, Hewlett Packard. Hewlett Packard. They make uh, printers and stuff, right? They, they do. They make printers and also stuff. Um, <laughs> Wait, didn't they make that Palm OS tablet? They For a short time, they did. You are correct. Um, so HP, the consumer division, now split, um, came out with a new computer. Now, you may say, Sean, why does anyone care about a new computer? We have lots of those. Well, this one is different because it does more things. It's called the Sprout. <laughs> And it's called a game changer. How true it, it's a uh, it's to be seen. self proclaimed game changer. Exactly. So the real highlight here is that it's got a couple things going on. So first of all, it's a big kind of desktop touchscreen computer. Uh, not a big surprise there. What does make it interesting is two parts. One is the uh, projector that sticks out above the monitor and projects down below onto a pad where your keyboard would normally be. Also, in that projector is a 3D scanner. So, the idea being is that you will use the projected image. You'll be able to touch it and interact with it, and it will do things with the computer. You'll also be able to put objects on that pad, uh, and the 3D scanner above will be able to scan them and incorporate them into whatever you're doing on the computer. Uh, for example, the sort of demos put out by the company are usually some hipster graphic designer type uh, person who is using it to touch and to pinch and zoom and rearrange objects in, in a Photoshop-like program um, and uh, being able to scan in images and immediately put them into whatever graphic design they're doing. Uh, they also showed off uh, examples using games as well, interacting with the pad below with the projected image while at the same time having your uh, picture up above on the monitor. Uh, Dan, you were you were kind of excited about this. Would you care to maybe share what, what's was I, was I interest? excited or curious? I, I maybe guess it depends how you define excited. I don't understand. First of all, I don't understand why this isn't a peripheral. Why is it an entire computer? Like, it's so ugly that it's not as though it needs to be, <laughs> you know, built into the the computer in a special way. It's just a monitor with this. Like overhead, what what do they call those things? Uh, uh, where you, you have the transparency in it, it an overhead projector, an overhead, overhead projector. projector. Yeah, 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 it's like it's like an an upside down overhead projector. Uh, I don't like if I could buy this and use it with computers and try to play around with it and write software for it, then that would be exciting. But if 
everyone that wants to use this has to buy this HP computer, I think it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, but I always was really excited about the Microsoft Surface, the original Microsoft Surface, the cool one, oh, you know, yeah. the table. That's uh, true. Where you, it would be your coffee table or at your table at a fancy restaurant or in your kitchen and you know where the ingredients are. Like, all of that was super awesome. So I think that this could be really great. Uh, and I think that you need something like that there to accurately uh, measure things that are happening in front of the screen. Because there's that there's that Kickstarter project. And Colby, you might have got. Did you buy this? It was like a a gesture thing where it had like a Kinect camera thing, and you could use gestures to control your windows. But it was just the camera. And oh, like the the leap motion. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, I have one of those. Um, random aside, they actually just updated the software to version two. So now like you can turn your hand over and it still, still works. Well, have you Um, tried using it for stuff? I used it for some stuff. They have a bunch of like apps. Um, they have like an app store and you can, you can use it for like, like there's like that, uh, it's called like better touch tool or something and it l- lets you do like crazy stuff with your your trackpad gestures on your Mac but it mm. the leap motion works with that. <laughs> so you can like bind it to pretty much any like like any computer function you would want. Um one of my the guy who sits next to me at work uses it to like lock his computer. He has like a he just like waves his hand and his computer locks. It's kind of cool. It's like so originally I was I don't know in in when I ordered it in my mind I had m- much higher expectations than what it actually was. Mm-hmm. Um so some of those expectations have been filled in that you can it can now like if you turn your hand over it doesn't like lose your hand. Um which is nice. So it's a, it's a, it seems to be the case that they're progressing with with what they can do with it, which is also kind of cool. Yeah, cause, totally. Because that's not like I feel like that's not a usual thing that you buy a piece of hardware and it gets like significantly better with hardware updates. Right. I mean, with software updates, but yeah, it's like it's kind of neat. Supposedly, it, it 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 has like a JavaScript API, so theoretically, I could do stuff with it. But a JavaScript API. I have not. I don't know if JavaScript is the only API library or if if it has others, but I know there's a JavaScript one. Yeah, so I think that you need the overhead thing like this thing has to to get better than what the leap motion can do. Yeah. But that, I don't think that anyone's seems reasonable. Yeah, I don't think anyone's gonna buy it if you need to buy an entire computer. So the thing that So maybe this is is it is it like a touch thing on the on the base like is it's, the base it's it, the base is literally just a white sheet of pad it's all it's sensing you from the projector above so did you guys ever have the uh the privilege to use a smart board no yes it's a similar okay. technology so I don't know what your experience with a smart board was like, but yeah, so so a smart most most smart words waste basically work the same way where it's like a projector onto like some sort of surface. And yeah, Jill's like throwing up in the background. <laughs> you didn't hear, but like they're pretty bad. They're bad. Mm-hmm. Um so I don't know, like I I will remain skeptical on how cool this will actually be until I can actually try one and see how crappy that like weird camera sensed interaction is. I think I think this is very much HP is misleading people. This is yeah. a prototype product. This is a hey we want some attention product. This is a <laughs> we're still I HP, mean, we're innovative product, but I can I can think of a dozen different Windows prototype computers that were like, this is going to be the future of, you're going to do all this cool stuff, and then they never got made, or they collected dust on a display in a Best Buy somewhere. I think 
I think it's it's cool concept, but it reminds me like Connect for Windows is kind of a similar idea where oh it's gonna be great we're gonna you know it was kind of a per, uh, not built in necessarily but oh it's gonna be this cool new way you're gonna interact with stuff and it, it th these things never go anywhere. I see this as yeah. a really great product for I think the 3D printer space. I think this would be really cool in because it has the 3D scanner built in, which I have no idea how that works, but I guess it does. Right. Um, where you'll be able to replicate or, you know, scan in, alter, and then 3D print. Again, I think there's real niche uses for this, but this is never, you know, it's like when you see the commercials with the people, what was it, Lenovo, when they came out with their, like, 27-inch tablet, and they had the co commercial <laughs> with the people, like, playing games on it and using it, like, on their kitchen table. It, it's it's a, a prototype, it's an idea, but uh, this is not something you'll see in, in homes in America anytime soon. I don't think. And it's and it's eighteen nineteen hundred dollars. Yeah, it's it's that I feel like that's price prohibitive for most people. Right. Or anyone really. Um Are there any like I don't know, like hands on reviews with this thing on the internet? I th I know the article we have was like kind of it wasn't really a review. I guess it is hands-on with Sprout. But it just sort of, like, says what it is. Yeah, it was it's a... It's, like, descriptive with pictures. It's not like, uh, I used this for a week, and this is what it's... Yeah, I don't think those are out yet. So that that uh, article was from the kind of HP event. Uh, right. But as far as I've seen, I don't think the uh, reviews, whether they're embargoed or they just haven't been done yet, I don't know. But they haven't been published, so... We'll have to wait and see. I'd be curious to see, like you said, I've used kind of the smart board, the touch projection as well, and it has been flaky. Maybe this will be better because it's on a smaller scale or, or, or what. Yeah. Um, or you know, maybe it'll be better just in that there's no, like, crazy calibration you have to do. Like, I'm sure there's calibration to some extent, but, like, the the error margins for like this thing that is one piece that's all like attached to itself are are probably much much easier to to deal with than like an overhead projector like <clears throat> attached to the to a crappy wall in a school or something mm -hmm. i don't know but, yeah i my my biggest sort of credit i will give the hp sprout is when i first saw the nintendo uh, the the DS, which I think was the first version of it with the two screens, mm -hmm. I was like, this is a really stupid idea, and this will never catch on. And all these years, with with again similar concept, your screen at the top, your touch sort of second screen at the bottom, and it, it's caught on. Now, of course, that's very different than a nineteen hundred dollar computer, but maybe maybe yeah. HP is onto something because that that certainly surprised me that that's caught on as well as it has. It it does look fun, oh. like. It looks cool. And thinking about having a screen, like, in the table, like, a secondary display, like, in the table, I feel like that's that's a little bit attractive. Like, even for, like, I don't know, like, I could see that being useful for, like, my work where I'm, like, I have all my codes up here. But, like, sometimes, I mean, usually what I do is I have my laptop to the side of my, like, big monitor and I have like you know chat and like m m documentation open for things on the side but I, I could see it being much more enjoyable to have that like on the table and like spread out in front of me not necessarily in my field of view but like it's much easier so that's that's the other thing um I believe it is much easier, like ergonomically, it is easier for you to look down than it is for you to look side to side. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what the the ergo people at F Facebook told me. So when I, for when I was thinking about how I organize my windows and things. Hmm. Interesting. But yeah. No, I don't have high hopes. <laughs> You're not going to run out and buy an HP well, Sprout? Cause he, yeah, here's the other thing. is you, I, We need a physical keyboard. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, Until that's, you that's get a... like, the human brain interface, even then, I think, like, I, maybe this means I'm getting old, but even if there was a perfect human brain interface, I think I would still want a keyboard just... 
just for the feel of it, like driving a manual car. Feels like you're you're doing something real there, Dan. You're you're just like the guy who who listens to records because they sound. You can really hear the sound. <laughs> uh, you're right. Yeah, it's the same thing. <laughs> worse is better. There's a worse, famous. <laughs> worse is better. There's a famous programming essay entitled "Worse is Better." It's an actual thing. Worse is better. I love it. That's great. Um, why don't we move on to a next story? Uh, I'm going to keep pegging so, you all night. Anything. Worse is better. Also called New Jersey style, which I did not know. There you go. Uh, <laughs> the idea is that quality does not necessarily increase with functionality. There is a point where less functionality, worse, is a preferable option, better in terms of practicality and usability. Software that is limited but simple to use may be more appealing to the user. Wow. Worse is better. This sounds like a great change mode episode in the making. Yeah. Seriously, like he was a Lisp programmer, so a little crazy, but. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, other things. Other what thing. else we got, Sean? Next story. Well, we've got a lot here. Uh, I'll pick one out before, you, unless you guys are going to jump in. Uh, you pick one, Sean. Okay, I'll go this time. Um, I'm going to talk about one that I was personally excited about that may not have Is been the, the biggest ads? news of the week. Oh, are you going to guess what What would you say? Uh, my guess is Instagram video ads. Nope, that's probably like third or fourth <laughs> on my list. CNET launching a magazine? That's my like craps. That's my like dumbass story of the week. <laughs> We're just going to ruin all the stories for everyone yes. as we. <laughs> I, I will put you out of your misery and I will say right. Roku. You know me, I'm Mr. Roku. I right. love my Roku. Well, I've said forever, if you're going to buy a streaming device, I like the Roku best because they have the best apps and the best channels, and they have more content than you can imagine. And check off every box on that list. Well, they added one today I don't think anybody expected, which was they added Google Play to the Roku. So there's now a channel. You can download it from the Roku Channel Store. You hook it up to your Google account, and it gives you access to Google Play, which allows you to... Uh, buy or rent movies or TV and have access to movies or TV you've previously purchased um, via Google Play. Now, this is interesting because there are a lot of free streaming things on Roku, but there aren't a lot that allow you to buy, right? There's, um, let's see if I remember, there's Amazon, Blockbuster Instant Video still exists, um, go figure, uh, MGO, and Vudu, and I think that's it. It's really great to see another alternative. Uh, Google Play has a really great library. And for me, this just makes Roku such an immediate no-brainer. Um, especially when you're able to... Roku does a great job of integrating their search results across all the apps. So you can see price by price. You can search for one movie. It'll say it's this much on this service, this much on that service. You can actually shop around. Um, and I have found that, oh, I didn't realize on Vudu it's a dollar cheaper than on Amazon. I'm going to go because it's all the same. Um, I'll do it that way. So I'm excited, and it's good to see Google uh, kind of reaching out and being uh, not snobs about having it on their Android TV or Chromecast uh, exclusively. Yeah, that's really great. So, when did you say you use Google Play, Sean? Or did you say you don't use it? Uh, I haven't in the past. I'm gonna. I, I may start. Like I said, it's 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 not yet integrated into Roku Search. It will be in the coming. For, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit, and when it is, I'll I'll, I'll price match. I mean, I've all right. I'll, I'll buy it on Google Play, Amazon. I don't care. Um, but you'd be surprised. You know, one service will offer it for rent, the other won't. Um, oh, really? But you don't. I would have thought this. they would all be pretty much the same. Yeah. No, it's because it's license different licensing deals for different companies, and Roku uh, does such a great universal search. Um, I sound like such a Roku shell, but I do love my Roku. Um, because <laughs> they'll put the prices right next to each other, which is really great. So. That's um, um, exciting. I have a question. Does yeah. the Roku have an HBO Go app? It does have an HBO Go app. Logo. It also has a Showtime um, app. Showtime. I don't have Showtime. <laughs> you guys laugh nice. like, Showtime? What's on Showtime? Next you're going to offer me stars. <laughs> <laughs> what is on Showtime? There's something on Showtime, right? Ho Homeland. Uh, Masters of Sex. <laughs> um, which is supposedly very good. I've never seen it. Um, what else is on Showtime? Uh, other things. Showtime things. Um, yeah, so there you go. Look for that on a Roku near you. 
Will do. Will do indeed. All right. That was a quickie. How about another uh, another story here? Uh, what's the FCC? You're doing? up, Bobby. Wait. Well, we can talk about the FCC. So this is interesting. Um, how many of you want your television on your internet? Mm, I want that. You you want television? On the internet? Well, <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah, I don't want to get cable anymore. That's you bet your ass you don't. Well, good news. The FCC may, and I will say may because they haven't yet, may do something about it to help you uh, make that a reality. So I'll try and make this as simple as possible. Under FCC regulations, cable and satellite, uh, well, we'll just focus on cable and broadcast right now, are categorized as television providers. That allows them to go and negotiate fairly with the AMCs and the FX of the world. What the FCC is trying to do is change that rule. Because currently, if you're even satellite to some degree, and especially internet companies, because they're not considered TV carriers, aren't afforded the same negotiating rights legally as a cable or broadcast company. <clears throat> so Comcast can go in and the law guarantees them certain fair bargaining and, and all these things that make it easier for them to make deals. They don't allow Netflix that because Netflix isn't a cable so, you know, provider. So the FCC mm -hmm. wants to change the rules that would cover companies more broadly known as multi-channel video programming distributors or MVPDs. Uh, that would cover satellite, uh, internet delivered television. Uh, it would be much broader. This is exactly, we've heard rumors for a long time about Apple wanting to negotiate directly with uh, companies for the Apple TV, uh, Google trying to do the same thing. Now they'll actually be able to do it under FCC rules. And that's what's exciting about this. That, that, that seems like it could only end well for us. <laughs> Which probably means there's something we're not considering. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, that, and that, you know, the cable companies are lobbying, I'm sure, quite hard to not have this pass. Um, but this is exactly what Aereo was pushing for so hard. Because you remember after they lost their first court battle, they said, well, now we're going to claim we're a cable company so we can go negotiate those deals. And the FCC said, hold on. Under the current law, you're not a cable company. You can't go negotiate these deals. Right. So that's... This yeah, is this is great. A bit of a response we to that. Do we think this, if this goes through, will this change Netflix's game plan at all? No. And, okay. and I'll tell you why. Because I think, I think this will change Amazon's plans. I think this will change other people's. Mm -hmm. Netflix has had such success going straight to creator that they, mm -hmm. don't need That's true. they don't need channels. That's what it is. They have done a pretty solid job. You know, unlike unlike a, an Apple TV or a Roku or an Amazon Fire TV, those are the hardwares that deliver the content. They need the channels, right? But Netflix is kind of a, a content database. They just need more content in that database. So they don't need a channel. They need a show. And I think that's a big difference between a, a Netflix and a Hulu and, and things like that. Now, of course, they could pivot and change. But under, I think, what they're doing today, I think that would make the most sense for them. And they've seen that's where they've seen their success. But I think, Agreed. But I see, on the other hand, Amazon struggled a lot <coughs> with their original content not getting the traction Netflix has. Imagine if Amazon said, with your Prime subscription, we'll give you access to AMC. Or, we'll get, you know, that's I think, could yeah. be an interesting model for them. Yeah, but <laughs> at the same time, like, I feel like at some point Amazon is going to have to stop giving us more free stuff with our, <laughs> our Prime subscription or raise the price of the Prime subscription. Well, but you know, if you, hey, if they gave me cable channels, I would, I would absolutely pay more for Prime. You know, I think it's, I think it's generating value. Yeah. But Fair but enough. you're but you're exactly right. I feel like Prime has become a catch-all for what more can we throw at them? Right. <laughs> I. I have to believe that they know what they're doing, but I guess there's plenty of examples in history where people don't know what they're doing, so <laughs> maybe I don't have to believe that. I don't know. I think Amazon will still be around in five and ten years. Well, yeah, I think. I, I hope. <laughs> I don't know what I yeah. would do without them. Well, the world economy would collapse. 
That would just, at least from my perspective. I, I would just quiver in a corner in my home just <laughs> yeah. weeping. I would starve. I would, exactly. <laughs> I, would, I could imagine the UPS man driving by, Why aren't you stopping? <laughs> Where's my box? Um, great. So get, uh, get, get uh, excited for that. We'll keep an eye. We'll let you know when that uh, hopefully gets passed. Maybe the FCC can do something right. <clears throat> we can hope. Yeah. Um, Maybe. All right. Another story. Any? Oh, oh, I'm up. I'm up. Uh, let's talk about droids still being a thing because I was a little bit surprised about that too. Droid was a little uh, is apparently still a thing. So you may remember this. I mean, how long? I ago? had an original Motorola droid. How? And how long? That must have been what four years ago. Yeah, 2009. Yeah, five years ago. And and you would have thought between Apple and Samsung and Motorola. And well, this is Motorola, LG and HTC, and all these things. When was the last time a Droid phone came out? I don't even remember. I guess last year. Uh, there was that. Uh, what was that? Uh, the, the Droid Razor Max Platinum or whatever the yes, hell it was. You actually, I'm looking at it now. That was one of the last. There was the <laughs> the previous lineup was the Droid Ultra, the Droid Max with two X's, and the Droid <laughs> Mini. Well, uh, uh, after a crazy amount of leaks on this product, Verizon finally announced the Droid Turbo. Turbo! <laughs> Woo! Get psyched. Um, Is it like the turbo button from, like, consoles where it just, like, uh, how did those work? I'm going to look it up. Keep talking. I think, well, all right, I don't want to guess. You'll know more than that. Uh, I will give you the quick stats here. The Turbo, it's almost a Moto X, the new one. It's basically the same thing. It's uh, bigger with a higher resolution display. It has a better processor, more RAM, a larger battery, and a bigger camera. So basically better in every way. Um, it also includes their uh, Motorola's Turbo Charger, which offers eight hours of battery life on just 15 minutes of charging. Um, and combined with a giant battery makes this a really powerful device. Uh, it's shipping with Android 4.4, but will be upgraded to uh, Android 5 Lollipop. Uh, and it will have all the cool features of the Moto X, including voice control, the Moto display, doing the camera twist thing. Um, and it's got that cheesy, crummy, fake Kevlar back thing that they insist on putting on all their phones. It comes in metallic black, metallic red, and ballistic black, which I guess is different from metallic black. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is. Uh, it will start at 199 for a 32 gigabyte model, and it will be available on October 30th, which means you can already get it. And early rev other early reviews say it's kind of mediocre. So go ahead, Dan. They also say that the Moto X was kind of mediocre. No, they like the Moto X. They say it's similar, but it's made of crappier materials and not as nice of a design. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways, yeah, it was just the droid. Oh, uh, remember the commercials where it was like super, uh, oh, yeah, super post-apocalyptic and terrifying. Yeah, it was so serious. Uh, really made me want to buy up with that? I, I still laugh because every once in a while, like every two or three months, someone's phone will go off with that droid. Oh, I haven't heard that in a long time. I still I've also hear it. York, I still though. hear it, and I'm like, this person has to be a time traveler from many years ago because, like. <laughs> There's no way that's still a thing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It was effective for Verizon for, like, a year or two. I mean, it really, I mean, I think probably at six or seven on the list of things that really helped Android become a success. I think Droid could be argued to be a big part of that success, mainly because oh, yeah. the first... Not even the Droid Actual. name, but the first concentrated marketing effort for Android yeah. phones. Yep. Uh, around a central brand people could really grasp onto. That was before anyone knew Android was a thing. Yep. So I, I, I think I still have my uh, Incredible, my Droid Incredible floating around somewhere. Maybe I'll Oh, uh, yeah. That was that the HTC one? Yeah, with Sense. Mm. Yep. Oh, <coughs> well, there you go. So Droid Turbo. Uh, now available at a Verizon near you. Okay. We've got Ooh. more news. How about we... Yay, more news. All right. I this, is, this was the other story I was really excited about. And that would be... Can you guess? <sighs> I know that's a tough one. Uh, is it Microsoft Office for Mac? 
I, you uh, both spoke at the same time, so I didn't hear what you said. I said the Microsoft band, but now I also see that your cur cursor is hovering over it in the Google Doc. Yeah, you caught me. Uh, it would be the Microsoft band. No, it's oh. not. I should have pulled up <laughs> the... Uh, do you guys remember the super cheesy um, promotional video they made for um, Vista, where it was like the Bruce Springsteen knockoff? I don't remember that. Oh, my God. Oh. We have the technology now where I can play sh uh, videos on the show. I'm going to see if I can pull this up. Sure. Um, it was one of those internal um, marketing videos. Uh, internal as in played, like, for the company? Yeah, like some sales conference or something, and then someone put... All right, here we go. Let me turn this up so you can hear it. I'm very excited. Last year... When Vista was new, we sold the optimized desktop value. That's a pitch that never fails. You saw lots of sales, but some enterprises said, wait and see. We don't want to adopt early. Well, that's over because of SP1. And our ecosystem, if they have been waiting. When they see the improvements in security, the desktop and mobility, and productivity, they'll say this, I gotta get me some. All right, I won't play the whole thing, but... <laughs> It was like some. Sean, were you mouthing along to that? Is that what I saw there? That is one of my favorite YouTube videos of all time because it's so. <laughs> and and uh, I'm gonna. I'm, I will send you guys the link later because you, you got to watch the, the <coughs> terrible actors in this. It's so funny. Um, how do we even get talking about that? I don't even remember. Microsoft uh, Band. Microsoft Band. Yes, Microsoft. Uh, they don't have a music band. They have a fitness band. That's what it was. Took me a minute, but I figured it out. Um, yes. Yeah, so, uh, it was leaked like five minutes before it was actually announced, but it was announced. We can talk about it. Um, it is their entry into the fitness wearable market. We talked about Fitbit, uh, I think on last week's show, uh, and their new bands. This is Microsoft's entry. One ninety nine, and it is a wearable. It tracks your steps, heart rate, and stride length, um, it's got like a dozen different sensors, all the ones you've come to know and love. Uh, what's interesting is it's not just a fitness wearable. It includes uh, text, email, and Twitter alerts, and a number of other features included. Um, the other um, sort of interesting side of this device is it is a multi-platform iOS, Android, and Windows phone using Microsoft's Health app. The Health app is interesting because it's one of the few apps i found that at least claims that it integrates really well with a lot of other apps, including uh, Google Fit uh, and HealthKit as your baseline, but also, you know, MyFitnessPal and RunKeeper and all these different, Jawbone and all these different services, hypothetically, uh, to create a really unified experience. Yeah, that's really awesome. I just, uh, the, the Fitbit app doesn't work with HealthKit. Oh, no, uh, I was just Googling that. Yeah, to there's, see that <laughs> and it's weird because they were like, it doesn't just not work. They were like blatantly, we are, it will not work. Like they came we right out and made it clear. It work. Yeah. And they were <clears> featured <throat> in the, uh, the, the keynote where they presented health kit, uh, a little, uh, man, I am not good at thinking of words today. What's the word where you say something, but you don't actually know if it's going to be true or not. Uh, anyways, Apple said that like, Oh, Fitbit would totally work with this, but they didn't actually know if it would or not. And it turns out that Fitbit isn't going to let it work with HealthKit. Mm -hmm. uh, God, that word is going to bother me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So one of the a couple big highlights of this device that Microsoft is touting. One is the intelligence of it. Uh, it's supposed to learn about you over time in a way they claim no one else does. Uh, it, as you work out, as you use it, it'll be able to combine different sensors, including motion, heart rate, things to know whether you're lifting a heavier weight or a lighter weight, or things like this, and being able to actually customize your workouts using these different sensors in the software. Um, as I said, it integrates with your smartphone to get uh, all kinds of alerts. It does have a touch screen on it, uh, a colorful to color touch screen, so there is a level of interactivity there, including responding to texts with pre-written answers. 
Uh, another interesting thing is if only if you're a Windows Phone user, this will integrate with their voice uh, assistant Cortana, and you'll be able to talk into a microphone on the band uh, and actually oh, use cool. it to interact with Cortana. Um, like I said, it's one ninety nine. It was available for order. It quickly sold out, uh, and I don't think they have a date for when it will be available after that. Does the Apple Watch talk to Siri? Yes. Okay. I don't remember that. Yep. Yeah, so I think I think the real highlight here is is this is a really great fitness band that has really great software behind it and also does some other convenient features. What what do you what what are your guys' thoughts on the Microsoft band? I'm really excited about the cross platform, uh integrating with all these other apps and stuff. That uh that's the Microsoft that I think Microsoft needs to be, not the uh, everything is Windows. A Windows platform rules everything because it only rules the desktop. Uh, and they didn't announce any any desktop version of this, like software or. Oh, um, anything. that's a really good question. Um, I didn't. I don't think so. No, no. But, but I think that that's. Like, we need Office on every platform. We need uh, this on every platform. Uh, and that's where Microsoft needs to go. So I'm I, I, not wild about how the band, the band wor- looks. I think it looks kind of clunky, but I think the software looks pretty cool. Yeah, I, I, I think it's... I think you're right, Dan. I think it is a bit clunky. Uh, to me, I think it's one of the best integrations I've seen with the sort of full color touch screen while still being a band. Like, we haven't really seen one like this. The only other one was the Samsung Fit that never really turned, never, I don't even know if they sold it because um, oh, I never heard Samsung about it. Samsung Fit. Um, but I think it actually is a very compelling device. I've been trying to be healthier, so I've been playing with different health apps. And um, it's kind of a nightmare, even with uh, HealthKit, which is all these apps. It's like, oh, we sync with HealthKit. We sync with other apps. They're all trying to sync with each other. They have no idea what's going on. <laughs> um, and Microsoft claims they figured it out, uh, and, and I agree. I think it's wonderful that it's cross-platform. I think Microsoft is uh, – they're not stupid. I think they realize that. If they made this only for Windows Phone, they would sell exactly none. So um, it, it's good to see them <laughs> supporting uh, that. So I, I think it's a really compelling product, uh, personally, at least in the in the more fitness than computer space, which is the debate we had when, when I talked about the Pebble, was it's straddling that line between the exercise fitness side and the mini computer on your wrist side. And I feel mm-hmm. like this one does, uh, at least they claim, a pretty decent job. Yeah, I, it looks solid. It looks better than most of the Android things, better than the Samsung thing, uh, better than all the other fitness watches, like uh, Fitbits and Jawbones. I mean, I guess the <coughs> the Fitbits and Jawbones are nice if all you want is that and it doesn't have anything fancy. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, I was impressed. And I think it overall. just proves again that I, I, I will... Stand by Microsoft. I think they make really good hardware. I think I, I think they make attractive hardware. I really do. I, I it, you can go all the way back. I thought the Zune HD was a beautiful product. Sir, no, don't let listen. For, for this, you go Sean back, talks you, about the Zune. You hold a Zune HD and you think you realize how far ahead of its time it was. I think the Surface is a great product. I I, I just I think Microsoft makes really credible hardware. I, I think the Zune was an example, uh, or the iPod versus the Zune was an example of worse is better. Like the Zune, it it did so much. It was difficult to understand. The iPod it had a wheel. You mm-hmm. played songs that lasted forever. Uh, worse is better. I miss my Zune. <laughs> I, miss it. I miss it every day. I miss it so much. Uh, all right, we're going to move on from Microsoft Band. We've got time for one, maybe two more stories. Anything in particular you guys want to make sure we talk about before we wrap today? We've got uh, Instagram video ads, Office for Mac. Um, we could be sad for space. We can be sad for space. Uh, it was not a great week for space. 
um, where we had two sort of back-to-back. -back. We'll start with the uh, one that happened first, the Antares um, orbital uh, something. What was it? Orbital Sciences Antares Rocket Orbital Sciences is a private space company um, along with SpaceX and a few others hired by NASA to send crap into space. Um, <laughs> last weekend, the uh, Antares rocket exploded six seconds after liftoff uh, on its way to the International Space Station. It was carrying about uh, 1,300 pounds of food, supplies, and experiments for the astronauts on the International Space Station. Fortunately, no one was aboard and no one was injured. Uh, the cause of the explosion remains unknown. Um, all we know is that it was uh, a, I believe it was a self-destructed aborted launch. Um, but outside of that, we don't know specifically what caused it. Uh, it was launching out of their um, pad somewhere on the East Coast. I don't remember specifically where. Um, and uh, do not worry, the International Space Station has enough supplies to last them into next spring. Uh, SpaceX is making a trip up there um, next month or two months from now. Um, so that's uh, very disappointing to see. Um, but even worse, uh, a few days after that, uh, you may know Richard Branson's company Virgin uh, and their space arm Virgin Galactic. Uh, they've been trying to have uh, manned space flights uh, on their spaceship, too, uh, for quite some time. This was the plane's uh, 30th, 36th, I think, uh, flight, and um, the ship crashed in the Mojave Desert. One test pilot died. Another uh, remains hospitalized. The exact cause is unknown uh, at this time. They know that um, they had an issue with the uh, tail of the plane. Uh, it was initially thought a new experimental motor was the cause. They now don't believe that's the cause, but it is under investigation. Um, the surviving pilot ejected from the plane. Um, and there you go. Richard Branson uh, promises to carry on, um, as do most of the explorers. Uh, just reminding us that space continues to be difficult as ever and that um, exploring doesn't come without its risks. Um, something we, we have yeah. to remember. Yeah, I don't have anything to say about this other than what you just said. Yeah, I, I have I, no expertise to offer. You know, it's no. when you're running... It, the same thing happened with the space shuttle. You know, when, when you're running missions every so often, it becomes regular, it becomes mundane, it becomes expected, predictable. Um, and strapping a, a, a giant, massive rocket to um, to a little pod to send it into space is certainly... Always a dangerous prospect, so it's something we have to keep in mind, but take it in stride and, and move forward. Yeah, who would, uh, at what point, if money were no object, would y'all go into space? Like, but see, this is the problem, right? Because Virgin doesn't really go into space. They go, like, a little bit into space, just enough, and then you come back down. I don't know right. if I'd be interested in that. If you're going to send me up to the space station for like a month, then I, I want to put like a Lance Bass and go up to the space station. Or the, uh, what is it, the Cirque du Soleil founder guy. He's he, He's been up there like four times. Uh, the the founder of the uh, Linux distribution, Ubuntu, has also been up there. Mark Shuttleworth. He also founded some computer security company. How do you uh, get to do that? Right. Lots of money. You pay the Russians. Oh. It's something like ten million dollars <laughs> oh. each trip. Yeah, Mark nice. Shuttleworth was his name. Also, the first South African to go into space, as it turns out. Uh, I'll I'll look it up. Yeah, it, I see. But yeah, I, you have to go through the Russian space program. See, I would do the. Was it? They call it the vomit comet. I forget the official name. the The seven forty seven where they where you do this and you're waitlist for periods of time. You ever see mm -hmm. that on TV? Yeah, yeah. The where where through the and then you're waitlist and then you get and then you're waitlist. So you just experience like that's fine. And then you're not even in space. You're just in a plane. I'll do that. I don't need to go to space. What's space ever done for me? <laughs> Except be full of nothingness. Um. Okay. Uh, let's see. How are we doing on time? How about one more story? Sure, sounds good. I agree. Uh, hmm. hmm. I don't know about this magazine thing. 
Sounds lame. I just thought it we... was stupid. LL Cool J is on the cover. Well, what? that's what's okay. Well, that's now what's we have to talk about. Do you it. know why LL Cool J is on the cover? No, no, because... Sean. Why is LL Cool J on the cover? Because of corporate synergy. <laughs> LL Cool course. J is on NCIS Los Angeles, which airs on the CBS network. CBS owns CBS Interactive, which owns CNET. Oh, dang. <laughs> so good. Um, yes, yeah, so just when you think magazines are dead and everyone's moving to the internet, how about taking a uh, long-time website uh, called CNET and making it into a magazine? That's what CBS has done. Uh, CNET, the magazine, is available now on newsstands near you for the cover price of five ninety nine. dollars uh, It runs quarterly. Um, it will have such interesting stories as... The Ultimate Tech Gift Guide, and should you wait for the Apple Watch or not? Um, I could not think of anything I would buy less than a CNET magazine. <laughs> <laughs> this is a physical magazine? This is, you can go, they're like, like you go, well, first of all, find a newsstand. There's your first problem, right? Find somewhere where magazines are sold. Then... Oh. I there are those still exist all over the place in New York. Well, but I don't ever see them selling magazines. It's like cigarettes and candy and, and Snapple. Yeah, uh, no, this is wherever finer magazines are sold. Yes, you can absolutely get this. It runs. Uh, Was it one hundred and twenty-eight pages? Whoa! I just, I just, I'm, I'm just, I'm baffled. Just baffled. First of all, I've, I've, and maybe I'm, I've never liked CNET. I always thought they were kind of crappy. Yeah, yeah they're it, and I always associate CNET with like a what was it download dot com? Yeah, they still are. Uh, uh, which is super seedy. Yeah, it's and like oh, here's a download button. Up, oh, that was an ad. Just kidding. CNET <laughs> installs more tracking cookies than I think any website I've ever been to. They're just so spammy and crappy. How do you how do you know this? Because there was like a, a period of time in my life where I was like, I'm going to be super security conscious and look at all the cookies. And I was like, I visited CNET and there was like 38 new cookies. And I'm like, how is that even possible? <laughs> um, yeah, I've I've never been a particular fan of their coverage. And I think uh, ever since they got bought out by CBS, they've gone corporate. You may remember they had the big um, CES controversy where the editors wanted to pick – uh, the sling, the uh, dish hopper with sling as their editor's choice, and because CBS was in a legal battle with right, dish right. over it, That's right. they made them change it. Oh. And I think right right away that kind of destroys any credibility you have. And now they have a magazine. Didn't MacWorld magazine just close like a month ago? It yes. Did, yeah. I I don't know how this is. A, I guess they're just kind of targeting people who are stupid. Like people who like who walk and look at magazines who are like, I don't know anything about technology. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess there are a lot of those people. To be fair, and and now that every other technology magazine has gone bust, there's nothing left. You have yeah, to buy I mean, the magazine. It's it's like, I guess the the intersection of people who watch LL Cool J on NCIS Los Angeles and people who know a lot of st who would buy a magazine is probably kind of large. Yeah. I could be wrong. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people watch it. I'm sure there are much more, ma ma many more people watching NCIS than that because people just love that. <laughs> yeah I, again i think this all comes back to corporate synergy it's being made by uh simon and schuster which is owned by the cbs corporation <laughs> um so i think in a, oh my god in a massive collaboration of uh and what's amazing is cnet was once a tv channel back in the day um they were their own right. network before uh tech tv that's right um so you never know maybe that could come back oh that'd <laughs> suck oh that would suck you have like well, Juliana Margulies talking about what phone she uses. Ugh. <laughs> Isn't the what's that other tech thing that's still kind of on TV but not really? G four. G four. G four is. I, I could talk for an hour about G four today, because it's a zombie yeah. network. They basically yeah. shut it down to turn it into the Esquire network, and then at the last minute, Esquire said, 
we're going to take over the style network instead and left G4 with almost no carriers, with almost no programming, literally as a skeleton zombie forced to roam the earth for all eternity. <laughs> so, yeah, G4 is still around. God, that's hilarious. They, do right. they just do reruns at this point? Yeah, that really is most of it. I, I don't think they do any original content. Uh, yeah. yeah, reruns. Into, I, a couple years ago, they had like American Ninja Warrior, yep. which has nothing even to do with technology. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They really pushed that as far as it could. It had cops reruns at one point. Um, <laughs> so well, let's uh, let's move on. We've gone through the news, uh, and now we got to talk about some picks. It's that time of the show. Um, I'm going to volunteer, and I'm going to go first. Why not? Um, I have two picks. I promise they're quick. Uh, I saw Dan was doing two, and I'm like, well, that's not fair. Why does Dan get to do two? And I don't mind, know. Mind, so uh, yeah, so we well, all got two. two. All right. Good. Um, my first <laughs> is uh, the Internet Arcade. This was the most fun thing I did, I've did. i done with an afternoon in a long time, and I did that today. Uh, you may know archive.org, the uh, Internet Archive, the website dedicated to archiving the Internet, as if such a thing is possible. Well, Aha, whoa. They rolled out. They got really creative with that name there. Yeah, they uh, they came out with a, an interesting new project called the Internet Arcade, and what it is is they're using a uh, an emulator in your browser to emulate over nine hundred classic arcade games, and these aren't ones you've never heard of. There's Pac Man and Frogger and uh, Missile Command, but there's also games you've probably never even heard of, especially us as millennials, uh, have definitely never heard of. And they have Joust. They have Joust. I mean, this list is incredible. Um, they emulate really well. It's a little difficult to play with your keyboard, I'm not going to lie, because it's the, the controls are a little funky for some of these. But it was a lot of fun, Just even just trying to figure out how to play them, never mm -hmm. mind actually trying to do decently at it, which I think it was about one game I did okay on. Uh, I sucked at Frogger, which I didn't even think was that hard. <laughs> so it's a really, I think it's just a fun way to spend some time. And it's, I'm, this is a prime example of why copyright needs an expiration date. The Disney Corporation would want you to think copyright should last forever. But it's great when clearly most of these get, Hangman the video game was not still making money for whatever company put it out. So why not <laughs> put it out in the public domain where we can all enjoy it? And I think this is a good example of that. So you can check that out. It's got a complicated URL. I made a short one. bit.ly slash Internet Archive Arcade. Uh, and uh, the link will also be on our website, don'tpanic.io. The one other uh, thing that uh, I wanted to share. Colby, I remember a while back you were looking for Twitter accounts to follow. Uh, maybe. Oh, Are you sure I, I wasn't looking too, for and... Twitter accounts to unfollow? Uh, well, this is one you definitely need to follow. This is, <laughs> okay. this is such an obvious must follow. Cause I laugh harder at this account than I do it at almost any other. It's Epcot center on Twitter. Yes. Named after the beloved theme park, um, spelled, uh, Epcot C E N T R E. Uh, yes, it is a parody account, but it's written in a tone of voice that I like to imagine is some poor office schmuck at Epcot center who got stuck running the Twitter account. And it's just an honest, wholesome guy who's trying his hardest, but makes Epcot seem like the most mundane place you've ever <laughs> been. So I'll quickly share a, a couple really fun ones um, that they've recently posted from Epcot Center. It only costs $18 per day to park a camper, trailer, or RV at Epcot. I think it's like $22 or something over at SeaWorld. That's a tweet. Um, you know, uh, their mailbag. Question. Are there things to do if, if it... Are there things to do there if it rains? Asks Barney. Uh, answer, you can visit the gift shop or wait in your car until it stops. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, another question, which Epcot restaurant is your favorite? Asks Angel. Answer, to tell you the truth, I usually just eat a lean cuisine in my cubicle. Um, there are... I like... Go ahead. No, you go ahead. This, uh, the last person who borrowed our jumper cables didn't return them, so if your battery's dead, there's nothing we can do to help. <laughs> <laughs> they're just so earnest and they just they come up when you don't expect them and uh, it, uh, it really okay. cracks me up so I think um, yeah they do little events it's a lot of fun so uh, it's Epcot Center on Twitter C-E-N-T-R-E -E, um, one of my favorite Twitter accounts so uh, a, a highly recommended from me so there you go my two picks 
Uh, who uh, dares to go next? I'll go. All right. Um, so my iPhone came last week, which was exciting. Ooh. Ooh. Um, Does this mean I can iMessage you again? Yeah, I'm back in blue, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so that's a, so, so that's what, one of my picks is iMessage because, except for that time when I tried to get an Android phone and it it kept hijacking my text messages from people. Um, it's pretty great. It's the greatest ever. And is now even greater because I can send uh, – today for the first time I sent a green text message from the Messages app on my Mac mm -hmm. and that was pretty cool. Um, so that was fun. So that's, that's my first pick. And my other pick is uh, 1Password. So this was again prompted by my getting an iPhone um, – and also kind of by the fact that at work we have, like, I don't know, the company has, like, a site license for 1Password. Um, so I've, I've been using it on my Mac for work stuff. And then, like, you know, the last I, – I, I always – I for the last two or three years I've used LastPass. And, like, LastPass is – I mean, it, it's functional – um, it used to be cool. I originally chose it because it was it had like the cross device syncing stuff. Um, so it was kind of like semi cloud based. Um, so it would sync. <laughs> right. You didn't have to set up your vault and put it on your like CalDAV server and all that crap. Right. It just worked. Um, so I was like, that's why I chose it originally. Uh, but then I got an iPhone and I have like ch touch ID and it's super fucking cool and I can just fingerprint stuff and it's crazy. Um, but then like the LastPass app doesn't work with touch ID and yeah, I don't understand. They said it did, but it, like there's a I setting mean, for it, but it doesn't do anything. Maybe it does, but I, I obviously can't figure out how I'm supposed to use it. Um, but and it's just like the app's not that great. Yeah, like, it works, but uh. so I tried it, the the LastPass app for iPhone is free. It's like free with an in-app purchase for certain features. Um, for like it's like multiple vaults and like folders and things. Um, but it's it's perfectly usable if if you don't want to pay for the in-app features, which is cool. Um. So I downloaded it and I was using it and I was like, and so two things led to my being like, all right, screw LastPass. I'm going to use this. Um, one of which is that it supports touch ID. And the other of which is that you can now sync over either iCloud or Dropbox. So one uh, password just stores your vault in like a file in your Dropbox and you can point your, like other instances of one password at that file and it just works. Um, like nothing bad happened. It literally just works. I haven't had any problems doing it. Um, so yeah, it's been really cool. And, and the iPhone app is really nice and it has a bunch of like integrations in like, like it's in Safari so you can auto fill into Safari and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So if you're uh, looking to change it up from from LastPass or get on that password manager boat, which you probably should, uh, <laughs> yeah, check it out. Now, yeah. uh, how how was it switching between the two? So you LastPass, you can export a CSV, and uh, One Password imports that CSV perfectly. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, I may have to try that. I've been using LastPass for a while and have been modestly satisfied, but I'm always up to try new things. So, yeah, it also like it also prompted me to go through all my like accounts and things in LastPass and like clean them up and delete the old ones and like I had accounts for sites that don't even exist anymore. <laughs> like, um, so yeah, in general, that was a good experience. Cool. All but, right. 
I have oh I also have a a, a minor tertiary pick in, in that I've been I've been using Overcast, um, which is like I like a lot, and like the only thing I think that it stands out is the way it does playlists, which is like so much better than any other podcast app. I've I ever still done. haven't made a playlist in it. How, I so I good. don't. What are you waiting for? Like. I just I don't have to do anything. I just listen like I open Overcast, start my new episodes playlist and I stop listening when I've listened to all the new episodes. Like in 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 Pocket Cast, you have to like queue up episodes you wanted to listen to. It was really exhausting. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. So, yeah. So that's good too. You should try that. Very good. All right. Dan Miller You've got like 38 picks. No, I only have two. I changed one of them because uh, you picked a Twitter. Someone picked you picked a Twitter I thing. A Twitter. So I, I I switched out my pick to uh, a Twitter thing. So go for we'll it. do the Twitter thing first. It's twitter.com slash portmontaubot, which is hard to spell. It is twitter.com slash p o r t m a n t e a u <laughs> underscore bot now what this is is these are words that con- conjoin like conjoin twins and combine together seamlessly that's a portmanteau so you see words like this all the time uh i wonder if there's an example on wikipedia uh <laughs> let's see uh oxbridge is like short for Oxford and Cambridge. Uh, religious, uh, turducken. These are all portmanteaus. But this is an auto-generating bot of portmanteaus, and it comes up with really brilliant ones like someone upmanship, tromboneless, turtle necklace. Uh, ah, they're all so good. Uh, and it p- posts one per hour. Paradise, where dice is spelled D-I-C-E. Uh, complaintative. <laughs> Mayhem line. Head cheesecake. <laughs> yeah, head cheesecake. <laughs> Dartboard room. It's another good one. <laughs> wow. The sweetheart break. <laughs> Hellfire storm. Main framework. Main framework, I retweeted that one earlier uh, for our, our Marist buddies. Trump Internship Trump. building. <laughs> I want to make an automated sighted. Twitter account. You yeah. got to do a Spoonerism one. Yeah, that's, not, that's true. You, you do the, oh, an automated Spoonerism one? Yeah, yeah. Huh. Like, where would I get the words from? Uh... What is it? Slash Etsy slash dictionary? I I didn't know this existed, but you're there is a text file on Unix computers that contains every word. <laughs> Whoa. Um, yeah. But I feel like the thing with spoonerisms is it like doesn't you need like a pair of words. Well there's or gotta more. be a list of like common phrases or uh I don't know. This sounds like a lot of work. Jeez. It does. Ugh. That's why I haven't done it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my second pick is a book I just finished this weekend, but I will be careful as I pick this thing because I'm not sure I, you should actually read it. It is a book called The Slow Regard of Silent Things. It's set in the same universe as The Name of the Wind, which I probably have also picked on the show before, and but have definitely recommended to Colby. Uh, yeah. An amazing book. But that you should read. definitely read The Name of the Wind and the sequel to The Name of the Wind before you try reading this book. Because although it's not a direct sequel, it involves one of the weirder characters in the book. And she, uh, and it's this amazing, you, know, some, you read a book sometimes and it's just a book, you know. Uh, but then you read a book and it's the craftsmanship of the words itself, like, really stand out to you. And it, it's as much about the story as it is about the storytelling, like how it's being told. Uh, this book, the the diction, the word choice, the words he chooses to use are incredible. He'll uh, 
have like word after word that describes this woman's thought process uh, and the words will sound very similar or even be homonyms like be said exactly the same but be spelled differently uh, just one after another and it shows what she's thinking like rain like oh it's raining and they'll be like rain r-a-i-n rain r-e-e-r-e-i-n and then like she sort of has this dark side where her thoughts go to dark places if she lingers on them and you can see this in the sh sentences that he wrote uh, it's so cool it's such a good book only 150 pages if you've read either of those books definitely check this out uh, it was a lot of fun to read it's the slow regard of silent things by Patrick Rothfuss yeah I, I have this on my Kindle right now I have not started it because I haven't read in like two weeks which makes me sad but uh yeah, let me find one of the one of the quotes real quick because well, and, and Goodreads and, is amazing. While you're doing that, I'll let all of our uh, listeners and viewers know that you can get the book at bit.ly/silentthings, and if you do that, we get oh, some of the row credit, it. and the link will also be on our website, don'tpanic.io. There we go. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh yeah, so this was the quote. Uh, she felt less. She felt tamped down. Dim. More faint. F-A-I-N-T. And then faint. F-E-I-N-T. Feigned. F-E-I-G-N-E-D. Feign. Which doesn't even sound like a word. But every time he did this, I was like, feign. That's not a word. Look it up. Pleased or willing under the circumstances. They were all words. I learned so many words because he just Ooh. pushed it just one more to a word that you thought couldn't even exist. And you're like, oh, it does exist. And it even makes sense here. Wow. It was shivering scant. Scared skint. But just around the edges, it was still scintillant. That's like poetry. And all those are words. Anyway, such a good book. Wow. Very cool. I still have uh, in the name of the song of the fire of the wind or whatever from the same guy. <laughs> it's, it's collecting dust in my Kindle library. I really got to read it. The name of the wind. Yes. Uh, very good. Well, gentlemen, that's it. We made it. We made it. It has been done. Whoa. Now, Whoa. I will say, I ask you guys if you have anything to plug. You do. There's a new episode of Change Mode up yeah. from last week, if you haven't already seen it. Chapters 3 and 4 on concurrency models. Yeah, that was yeah. a lot of attention. Definitely check it out. Uh, and then next, next week, not this week, but next week, we'll be doing the actor model. We'll have stages and talk about how not to upstage people and how to practice your theater voice. And we'll be <laughs> Actually, we'll, we won't talk about any of that. We'll talk about computers. What? Computers. Yeah. Computers. Surprise. That, that, that's about as much as I get out of it. Uh, yes, I think you should out there watch it. Changemo.de is the website there. Uh, check it out. It's a really great show. Uh, I am proud to be associated with such talented gentlemen as Colby and Dan. Um and I get to hang out with them every Monday night on this show, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific, on our website, uh, don'tpanic.io. Of course, as I say every week, subscribe. It's the best way to get the show when it gets posted. Uh, usually on Tuesdays, you can get it uh, through iTunes, RSS, Stitcher, uh, YouTube. If you've got a better system, I'm happy to plug us into it. Um, <laughs> audio, video, our website, don'tpanic.io, and at Don't Panic Show on Twitter. I think that wraps us up for this week. On behalf of Colby and Dan, I thank all of you out there for joining us on this show. We'll see you next week with more Don't Panic. But until then, good night. Yeah. This show is brewed fresh weekly by the Coffee and Beer Podcast Network. Get all our shows at our website, coffeeandbeer.tv.